I'm heading back to the Big Island for a dear friend's celebration of life and to get in a night dive with my current day crew. It's lobster season, but here in Hawaii, you can't spear them. So the best way to try and grab them by hand is at night when they're out and about. But rather than just do a quick night dive, my friend Justin Lee wants to do an all night dive adventure and try to spear some fish when the sun comes up. So our friend Asa is taking us out on his boat and cameraman Perrin is here grudgingly. But Justin Lee seems to be the only one with the energy for this. Everybody else is on Hawaii time. I'm still on Greenland time. So that's which is why. like 8 a.m. Yeah. So it's... No wonder it's you're being ready for so some action. You know, just how to poke my buttons <laughs> enough to get me out on a boat at midnight when I'm like a go to bed at 8.30 type of person. Basically, I'm having a hard time forming sentences right now, but our day is just beginning. This this opportunity that we get to go do right now is pretty rad. I'm we'll be able to jump in the water and uh, get some ocean cockroaches, set some uh, Kona crab traps. Uh, you know, we're going to celebrate something really special to, to everybody on the boat on yeah. Sunday. It's cold, wet, and I'm tired. But these guys are my partners for a reason, because we show up for each other. They do it for me, so if Justin wants to go diving all night, we're all in. We all bunker down and try to get a little rest before getting to our spot. And before we know it, it's go time. Did I ever tell you that I um, really suck at grabbing lobsters? 12.40, it's game time. Good morning, princess. Does anybody else take like a full breathe up before putting their wetsuit on? I do. <laughs> like, whew, it's going to be the night. deepest dive I've ever done. <laughs> so we're going to jump in and uh, try and get the first few bugs of the season. The ground will be crawling, so I'm looking forward to it. Oh, so rocky. Oh. And now I'm like nauseous from the beach. Flat like leg. Flat like leg. Flat like leg. Okay. We're good. We're pretty far away, bro. Ready. All right, go upstairs. Thank you. You ready? Ready. Good. There you go. As the search begins, my fatigue fades, and it's an eerie feeling to only be able to see what you can shine your light on. We start off not seeing a whole lot of lobster, but man, there are menpachi everywhere. And while we're diving, Captain Asa is catching them. So we're fishing here, just on the outskirt of where they're diving, so we can keep an eye on them while they're diving. But uh, we're catching menpachi right now. It's a type of squirrel fish, actually. They're usually reef dwellers. They're in caves during the daytime, but they come out to feed at night. They're a little spiny. You gotta watch when you grab them, but... And hopefully we can fill that five gallon bucket while they're diving. Soon our luck changes and we start seeing lobster. This is a male and you can tell by those leaf-like shapes along the tail. Those swimmerettes would be a lot larger if it were a female. Females also have a second set of swimmerettes that are more feathery. And in Hawaii, you have to put the females back. Females will also often have eggs. This orange row is a sure sign that you gotta put her back. There is a size limit here, and it's a three and a half inch carapace. However, Hawaii has absolutely no bag limits for how many lobsters you can take. We feel a responsibility to set our own bag limits, and that's why we're only bringing one lobster bag for the whole boat. And our goal is to fill it up. Though it is easier to grab lobsters at night, they still have a way of getting away from us. A little teamwork goes a long way. It's an extra dark night and the rain is now coming in, but underwater, it's a completely different world. It's mesmerizing down here, not just because of the lobsters, but there are so many unusual creatures out at night. This snooty branch is called a Spanish dancer, and it's easy to see why. Justin finds a 7-Eleven crab and adds that to the bag. 
then we see a free swimming cuttlefish. We don't get to eat these very often, so Justin gets it with his three prong. I use Justin's spear to get something that I really want, a scorpion fish, also known in Hawaii as nohu. This is a huge one and they are delicious. Our bag is now full of lobsters for our whole crew, so this dive is done. Good bag limit and an extra. That's a big no. I know. Like, that's a lobster and the lobster fish. Yes. That was a good spot on that Nova. Good job, man. That was fun. It's super, super cool. We got some big ones. We, we could have just kept going and going and going. <laughs> you know, if we all had bags, we could have all filled up a bag each. But, uh, you know, I think the rule of thumb is one bag for the boat. Yeah. That's your, your bag limit. Our literal bag limit. <laughs> exactly. We definitely got our Actually, fair the share. the bigger ones were easier to grab. Look at this. Going for the big, big ones. The nice ones. Oh, you have a too. Oh, yeah, we got a Thank you. <laughs> Though my energy came back during the night dive, it's now 4 a.m. and time to head to the next spot. I'm exhausted and make every effort to rest when I can. It's almost time to throw the crab pots. I'm, so I'm freezing cold. I am not. I, <laughs> I um, also got hit in the face by a flying fish in my sleep. I feel like the sleep we get, it's like, it's like being really, really thirsty and just getting little sips of water. So we've been getting just little sips of sleep. Lobster season is also Kona crab season. So before we start diving, we're gonna set some crab nets. We're using chunks of kahala as bait tied to the center of each net. After dropping his whole string of nets, Asa ties a life jacket to the end of the rope, which will serve as his buoy. Justin and I are now jumping in at a pinnacle, and we're hoping that some big pelagic fish will be in the area. The predatory fish won't necessarily be right on the pinnacle. They'll be circling around it, um, trying to get anything that ventures a little too far off. It's now almost 6 a.m., the sun is up, but the weather is not getting any better, and neither is parents' attitude. You know, it's just cold. Having a lot of fun. Yeah. Meanwhile, Asa is brining our lobsters with salt and ice. Underwater, it's a beautiful morning. The light at this time always mesmerizes me, and the clarity is spectacular. I take a drop to 75 feet at the top of the pinnacle and there are reef fish everywhere, but none of the predatory fish that we were hoping for. Both Justin and I don't see a single one. We return to our nets to see if we have any better luck with crabs. I don't sit for very long, I mean, nope. Kona crabs are also known as spanner crabs, and in Hawaii, we prefer to eat them raw. We scored on Kona crabs, and now they're going right into the live bait well so that they can filter and clean themselves. Justin and I are now dropping in on a deep reef to see if we can get any mu or uku, also known as gray snapper. Immediately, we are greeted by hihimanu, or eagle rays. Justin switches to a three-prong to explore this cave, and when he gets there, it is filled with ulua, or giant trevally. He hits one solid. This thing looks like it's in the bag. But at the last second, he's unable to pin it and it gets off. I get to the bottom and there are a ton of fish everywhere, including moo, which is exactly what I'm looking for. They're a white fish with thick black bars on the top of their back. 
But these ones are all just a little smaller than what I was hoping for, so I don't take a shot. Justin hits the bottom at 80 feet and three beautiful uku start approaching him. <laughs> Grunting will often bring uku in closer. Justin takes his shot and nails it. Justin's technique and shot were perfect, and this is a great fish. As I dive down, my body feels warmed up and good again. Every dive can be different in free diving, and sometimes you just want to turn around and go back up. But I feel good and full of air, and I just hope there's fish down there. Immediately, I see nice uku, so I duck way down and start scratching my fingers on the rock to bring them in. It works and I take my shot, but my shot is low. I need to get this thing away from the reef now. The fish wraps my line around a coral head and rips off. It always breaks my heart when I fatally wound a fish that I don't land. It just eats me up as I think about everything that I could have done better. My dad would always tell me that nothing goes to waste in the ocean and Justin shares the same sentiment to try to make me feel better. And it's gonna suck. Well, you know what it's gonna do? Feed the lobsters that you let go last night. Hmm. So that the next time, Lobsters will be big. The eggs will be healthy and let go. And that tastes like food. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we got lots of on the ground. Got some big lobsters. Yeah. While I was diving last night, Buddy had a sleepover with his friend Ronan and my friend Rebecca babysat both of them. This is the lobster tail, and this is the lobster head. Yes, yes, no. <laughs> it's flooding. Yeah! So we're gonna make lobster Benedict for Auntie Becca. I'm steaming the lobster from my Benedict and turning it into a game for my little helpers. Okay, guys, it's time to see what color the lobsters changed into. Okay. Green. Green. Buddy, what color do you think they changed to? Blue. Blue. Are they green or are they blue? I slice the tail and then get all of the meat out of the legs and head using a chopstick. Now I'm poaching an egg and making some homemade hollandaise. Wow. Now this is a well-deserved breakfast for both of us. Just do that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm your feral friend. <laughs> After getting some rest, my babysitting privileges are over. So I meet up with Justin in the afternoon to get some target practice and go on a little nature walk with the kids. Stop pushing me. Stop pushing me. This is real life challenges. Daddy, mm -hmm. I don't know. He's moving me. Go, go. See that one? Dad. Oh. Can you show Buddy the cow? We're hoping to see some wild pigs, but we know our chances of getting one are slim to none. You have to be quiet, okay? <laughs> oh, no, I see a pig. Shh. Then you have to walk. Yeah. You see that, Buddy? Justin is such an avid and talented bow hunter. But he's also a family man and just loves being out in nature with them. Justin's trying to call in two fighting boars that we heard in the distance. And although it didn't work this time, it sure made Buddy be quiet. At least for a little while. I'm grateful for how our friendships have evolved, especially since having kids. 
We're still pursuing what we love, but while learning to make more room for the people we love. We gotta find a bigger one to show you. Yeah. I wanna hear it. The big is not coming out. You sound just like Uncle Justin. He literally just came up to this tree and shook it until the guava came off. Hey, good job on getting food, man. Give me nooks. That was awesome. Let's eat it. Shh. I know. You did great. Let's be real quiet, okay? Because there's going to be goats over there. We don't want to scare them, okay? Oh, I'm not going to move the nook rock. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why. Come on, my hand. There's no cow. I can cow. And after scaring all the pigs away, Buddy manages to scare every single goat away right too. Because they heard you talking, but they all heard you. Despite the odds against us of trying to get close to an animal with these rugrats, it's always time well spent and a worthy pursuit. This morning, Buddy and I are gathering chili peppers and bell peppers to make a spicy seafood okay. soup. Careful when people are eating it. Meanwhile, Asa cleans Kona crab for his raw preparation. We quarter the crabs and then coat them in a kimchi sesame base and then suck the meat right out of the shell. That is so good. We're gonna be using a little bit of everything from our night dive to make this cozy miento stew. I love this little nighttime section that we're looking at because it's like such unique stuff, you know? That's why there's no better thing I could think of than to make this Chilean stew called cozy miento, which Basically, it's just like when the mountain people and the coastal people would come together and bring, you know, their vegetables, their meat and stuff from the ocean and they just pretty much like put in a big pot. Wow, I'm filleting my nohu and saving the meat to put in later. To make my broth, I'm using onions, wild pork sausage and the nohu head. That's We're adding crab pieces and all the peppers. We'll give that a stir for a pot. I'm also adding in a whole bottle of white wine. We're adding a lobster head and filling the pot with water. We're throwing in potatoes, tomatoes, fresh herbs, octopus, and the cuttlefish. Harvested sea salt in there. Also known as pot pie. Hot soup on a rainy day is always a great combo. The ingredients in this soup are as abundant and diverse as all of the adventures that spearfishing has given me. I didn't get much, but I just want to make sure I get everything. Delicious. Very nice. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Kimmy. This looks absolutely amazing. Thank you, guys. We all have that appreciation. We all know how much goes into every bite that we're taking here. And as we enjoy every beautiful, savory sip and slurp down the raw Kona crab, we also get ready for our important task tomorrow, putting our dear friend and fellow diver, Mike Hong, back in the ocean where he belongs. Like Hongi, Hongi might have moved on to a different realm than we're living in right now, but I think it made us all like realize what great friends we have, what who, you know, who we have and how precious life is. I know for me and every one of us, it made us want to be better people. He clearly just told us like, love each other. You know, if there's one thing I can ask, love each other. I love the way this spearfishing community shows up. It's unlike anything I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe there's something to be said about friendships that are literally made at depth. Or maybe it's all the underwater conversations had where we don't even use words. All I know is that we sure are here for each other in this life and way beyond that. We love you, Hongi, and we always will.